Hey everyone, in this video we're going to be talking about chapter 8 of the Mythical Man Month, which is named Calling the Shot. One of the big parts of programming is discovering how long a project will take, and as part of the process of that planning, giving stakeholders a sense of how long that will be. Project estimation is also one of the hardest parts of coding because it varies so widely from project to project, and one of the biggest fallacies is to assume that project duration grows linearly with scope when in reality it grows geometrically. And it grows even faster as you add more workers to it. Coding is part of programming, but so are the more invisible tasks of planning, documenting, testing, integrating with other parts of the system, and so on. The next few chapters show some examples of how and why estimation tends to be misleading by accident. Charles Portman, a manager at a large tech company called Inter International Computers Limited, noticed that his teams tended to miss their project estimations by about 50%. In other words, projects took twice as long as expected. After noticing the trend, he asked his employees to keep track of their time and found something that would be surprising except in light of the previous data he had. And this is what it was. That only 50% of engineering time was spent in coding and debugging. The rest was spent in dealing with urgent ad hoc requests, meetings and paperwork, and computer downtime, as well as personal time. John Hare of Bell Telephone Laboratories did a similar study considering four large projects that his teams were in charge of. Two were relatively straightforward projects, and two were relatively complex. In the straightforward, not easy by any means, I don't mean to diminish that of course, but in the straightforward ones, he found that a given worker could likely write and test about 220, sorry, 2200 words in a work year, while in the complex ones, the number was much lower, more like 600 per year. Beyond the obvious insight that it's difficult to make a generalization about programmer productivity, the workers in the quote-unquote straightforward projects were, on the surface, over three and a half times as productive based purely on word count. It's important to also note that the team size varied widely as well, with the straightforward project teams having 9 to 13 programmers respectively, and the complex project teams having 53 and 60 programmers, respectively. Did the complexity come from the tasks themselves or the amount of people working on a given project? It's hard to say, but significant to note the difference. Studies of how complexity and difficulty go hand in hand pervade the rest of the chapter, but I think you get the idea. Regardless, the chapter closes with a significant insight about the distinction between high and low level programming languages. Fernando Corbato found that a programmer could likely write and debug 1,200 lines per year if using a high-level language. This is a significant jump, since in the previous examples we were measuring in words rather than lines. The overall conclusion of this chapter, then, is that programming pro productivity can be increased by as much as five times when using a suitable high-level language, since the majority of machine instruction is abstracted away. That's all for this video. I hope you found it helpful and thought-provoking, and I'll see you all in the next one.